Welcome to this webinar for the ECRG Amendment, ECR Genius. Uh, this uh, webinar is for round one ECRG grantees. We have a lot of useful and valuable information to share with you. Please select a language uh, using the global icon at the bottom of your screen. Uh, we have two languages available, English or Spanish. You will need to select one of those to participate in the meeting. Si necesita traducción en español, por favor, este, haga clic en el icono de abajo y seleccione el idioma en español. Yeah. Además, por favor, avísenos en el grupo chat que necesita el servicio de traducción en español. So, also, if you're using the Spanish translation service, please let us know in the chat that you will be using that service. We'll get started in about 30 seconds. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, thank you everybody for joining us. My name is Tony Torres. Uh, I'm with the Center for Creative Land Recycling. I'm a consultant to DTSC on the ECRG program. We're happy uh, that you're here for this uh, webinar. Uh, before we get started, we're going to go through the meeting guidelines. Uh, by participating in this meeting uh, today, you understand that the me meeting is being recorded, uh, that you may be muted to reduce background noise. Um, the chat feature will be used to distribute information, accept feedback to be read during the Q&A period, which will take place after our presentation, but feel free to use the chat function. As the meeting is going along, you might have a question that pops into your mind. And so don't forget it, put it in the chat and we will get to it after the presentation during the Q&A session. This meeting is about the Equitable Community Revitalization Grants. We will not be able to address other topics. Next slide, please. Uh, language and captions, uh, simultaneous audio interpretation is available through Zoom or in Spanish, okay? Hoy tenemos interpretación disponible para personas que desean uh, recibir la información en español. Uh, click the interpretation icon at the bottom of your screen to select a language. That's very important for everyone. So please select English or Spanish. That will allow you to better hear and participate in the meeting. Por favor, si necesitan uh, oír la junta en español, seleccionen abajo en el icono del globo el idioma en español. In order to hear the session, you got to select the language. I've already gone through that. If you're calling by phone only and would like Spanish audio interpretation, you'll need to call 877 917-6178 and enter the code 418-0779 pound. Si llama por teléfono hoy y requiere interpretación en español, por favor llame 877-917-6178 y marque el código 418-0779. Uh, Spanish translation, uh, the Spanish translated presentation slides will be available at the meeting announcement. Esa presentación está disponible en la página del anuncio de esta reunión. Automated, automated closed captions have been enabled. You can turn them off by clicking CC icon. Also, I'd like to introduce uh, the folks who will be taking us through this presentation. So Miriam, Reina, Vivian will be handling the chat today. And then uh, Tracy will be providing Spanish translation. So at this point, I'd like to turn over uh, the meeting to Miriam, who will take us through our presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tony, for uh, providing all the instructions and kicking off today's ECR Genius. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Marion Pazif Abbasi. I am the Brownfield Development Manager for the Department of Toxic Substances Control, and I manage the Office of Brownfields. 
We're really excited today to talk to our ECRG round one grantees um, and share with you um, our upcoming process on how to apply for an amendment to your existing ECRG agreement. Um, I did want to let you know that we have a very information dense session today. There is a lot of information on the slides. I'm not going to be talking through them word for word. Um, just I'm going to be staying on sort of like the higher level topics. Um, it's helping you understand uh, what the broader infrastructure is. These slides will be available to you um, and the webinar is being recorded. Uh, we'll try to get that released and on our website as quickly as possible, hopefully by sometime early next week. Um, I'm also going to go through the slides fairly quickly because I want to make sure that we have time for questions after the session. So, you know, we'll see if we can keep to our um, you know, scheduled about 30 minutes or so uh, for running through the slides and leave space for questions. Um, we had a quick chat this morning. If we do need to run over past 11 o'clock uh, to accommodate questions that are coming through from all of you today, I want to let you know that we are happy to do that. We will stick around um, uh, to the best of our ability for as long as it takes to answer the questions. So I just wanted to kind of give everyone um, uh, that rundown and I'm going to go ahead and talk through. We'll talk about, you know, uh, amendments, schedules, uh, the process um, and some of the details that you'll need to know to develop a successful applica uh, application for the amendment request. Next slide, please. So um, I'm going to advise that everyone begin preparing for the amendment as quickly as possible. Uh, we're going to be starting to accept requests in the March timeframe. We don't have a specific date right now, but we'll make that date available as quickly as possible. And we'll notify everyone through the um, ECR good morning process that gets sent out through our flood system. Um, so make sure that you're keeping in touch with whoever is listed as your main point of contact. The ECR good morning um, is also also posted on the ECR grantee website fairly soon. So that'll be a couple of different ways to, to access it. Everyone needs to take a look at their original ECRG grant agreement. That signed date um, of execution is really important because all the amendment requests must be submitted at least 60 days prior to the end of your grant term, um, which is the, the date on your agreement. Um, since the grant term for every CRG grantee is a little bit different, um, the application period closes on the 30th of September, um, but I just wanted to note, and you'll see this when we go through the process, that uh, it's quite likely that all the available funds will be fully allocated before then. Uh, but everyone's <clears throat> 60 days prior to the end of grant term is a little bit different. Next slide. So this is um, uh, our table that helps you understand whether or not you're eligible to apply for an amendment. It's all based on where you are with your um, with your spend. Um, we're measuring our minimum percent spend on the reimbursement requests that have been already approved for payment. So you, you may not necessarily have received your check, but if it's been approved by the portfolio manager, that's well, that's how you'll be able to get your um, your percent spend. And so you can see there's this um, staggering of where you are uh, with your spend and what you can apply for. Uh, we've got uh, we're able to accommodate time only extensions, budget only extensions or amendments and time and budget amendments. And what's available to you can be uh, in blocks of six, 12 or 18 months. Those are fixed blocks just because that's the way our system is set up. Um, and then if you are, um, you know, in these different ranges, you can see the amounts that you can apply for. And so uh, for anything that's um, below 50, you can ask for anywhere from 20,000 to uh, 200,000 if you are an investigation grant or a cleanup grant. Um, if you have a higher spend, if you're over 50%, then your request can match up the maximum grant amount for your grant type. Um, and we have those numbers later on in the presentation. I'll talk about those a little bit later. Um, for our community-wide assessment um, ECR grantees, um, uh, because of the type of these grantees, the threshold is a little bit different. 
um, you can have, as long as you have a 25% spend, you can ask for uh, a nominal amount as, as low as $5,000 uh, because that's what we've heard for some of our grantees. And it automatically includes a six month uh, extension. Uh, you still um, are not a, uh, able to go above the ceiling for your grant type for R1. Next slide, please. So, you know, in addition to finding what box you're in, uh, in order to be eligible, you have to have submitted your uh, amendment request with, you know, prior to 60 days of your existing grant term expiring. You have to meet the spend requirements. You have to have demonstrated responsiveness to your regulatory oversight agency and uh, to your portfolio manager. So we've got some specific components in place just so that we can check that um, objectively. Um, if we, if it's been determined that you've been unresponsive to two consecutive email requests from your portfolio manager or your regulatory oversight agency um, or three requests over the last six months, then um, you will be considered an unresponsive grantee and you won't be um, available to, and th this process won't be available to you. Um, and we've talked about the fact that you can't average uh, the percent spend over multiple grants to meet the spend down criteria because we do have some grantees who have multiple grants. And, uh, you know, at this time, we're looking at only one request per grantee organization, and um, it looks like we're focusing on having just one time amendments per ECRG agreement that's subject to change, but that's where we stand right now. Next slide, please. So, um, you know, the biggest focus of this amendment um, process, because our funding is very limited and we do have a lot of grantees, is that we are focusing on tasks that are confirmed and ready for implementation or are in progress and are fully planned. Um, we want tasks that are going to be implemented within the uh, grant term. It's going to be for gap funding to continue tasks that you've already been um, you've already uh, been approved for, or new tasks that have been either requested by your regulatory oversight agency or by your uh, portfolio manager. Um, we don't have a provision right now uh, because of the limited amount of funding uh, we have to request additional project management allocations. But if it's something that's already uh, been approved in your original agreement and unspent, then of course that's allowed. And that's going to become important because um, I'll talk a little bit through how we're going to design the requests for the tasks and for the money. And um, it's really important that the money that you ask for is very thoughtful and deliberate in that it is going to happen. And there's a very, you're coming to us with a very high level of confidence that these um, tasks uh, are going to be achieved. And this um, uh, allocation that you're asking for is going to be spent because uh, we are going to be adding some non-compliance and termination uh, components to your amendment agreement based on a language that we had introduced for our round two grantees. Um, next. So here are some important things to know before I go on to the next slides and important for you to know so that you can start planning. The amendment request, um, which is going to be submitted to us through an, a quarterly expenditure plan, which is simply a table, has to include both your new requested amount and the current balance of your ECRG agreement, because we're looking at um, the spend down for the, for the balance and the new requested amount, kind of as like a new forward moving schedule. And um, this, of course, the, the original amount really, as I mentioned before, is about, is about uh, comes from the reimbursement requests that are approved for payment. Those are, that's the money that's been considered spent. Um, for time only extent extensions, you will still need to provide your expenditure plan for the remaining balance of your current ECRG agreement. Um, the requests have to be for investigative and cleanup related tasks. Um, as I mentioned, we want to make sure that these tasks are ones that you're coming, that are, uh, are being presented to us are ones with a very high level of confidence to be completed. And um, I, I just want to let you know that our project, our portfolio managers, they won't be able to support expedited reimbursement requests because I, um, I, we are, you know, really um, in a crunch time right now. And so if you do need to get your reimbursement requests in, please go ahead and get them in um, as soon as possible. And our portfolio managers will process them as quickly as uh, they can. They just cannot accept requests uh, to do those on an expedited timeframe. Next slide. 
Um, these are just the questions. I'm not going to spend time on this because I wanted to skip actually right to the next slide where I'll talk about um, how to make sure that you answer these questions correctly. So let's just go ahead and move on to the next slide. So um, how do you make sure that your amendment request meets all the eligibility requirements? Um, uh, if you can go back, Nicole, for a second, please. So we've got basically like seven um, questions. One of these is just uh, telling us what box you're in. And the eighth question really is designing that quarterly expenditure plan. And so it's a fairly it's a fairly brief um, application, but um, it, it is dense in the kind of information we're asking for. So next slide, please. Thanks. So the first question is simple. You know, just check your date and make sure that you are um, uh, you know, uh, submitting your request um, 60 days prior to your grant term. Um, and then, you know, at the, the second question is also straightforward. Just, you know, just go back and make sure that you've been responsive. And um, here are some questions that are sort of informational. You know, like what is the remaining balance of your ECRG grant? So that's informational. Um, your new request, um, when added to your uh, previous allocation, cannot be over the total of your allowable grant types. That's another thing that can render um, your application um, ineligible. So it's really something that you should make sure you have the correct numbers in. Um, we want to understand why you need either a time extension or a budget extension or both. And we want to understand what your barriers were that prevented you from meeting your original uh, task commitments and how those barriers have been resolved. And if um, from your narrative, it is not very clear to us that the barriers have been resolved, um, you know, uh, or do not include resolution, then that um, response will be considered to be ineligible. And for the next two questions, um, you'll see, it'll be a little bit more clear when we go through the quarterly expenditure table. Irene is going to walk you through that. Um, we want the tasks to either be confirmed or in progress. And we're confirming, uh, we're defining confirm as um, tasks that are ready to go. All barriers have been resolved. They're under contract. You have your regulatory approvals in place. You've got something that's, you know, at, at a reasonable schedule, and these tasks are going to happen. And we want to understand the provisions you have in place to ensure um, that your plan will be implemented as proposed. And if we um, are unable to verify that by conversations with your regulatory oversight agency, um, then it, this response will be ineligible. And question seven is very similar, um, but the these would be your in progress tasks, tasks which are fully planned, but maybe uh, awaiting approvals, contact, contra uh, contracts, etc. And so, if um, the task cannot be verified, or if we feel your response doesn't effectively provide a path to the resolution of the barriers, the application will be considered to be ineligible. And so we tried to make this as straightforward and as objective as possible. I did want to point out, since we are currently, you know, building the system, um, there may be some slight adjustments to these questions until we, um, you know, are ready to launch. But I think they'll generally be all within the same, um, have the same intent. Next question. Next slide, please. So. Um, you know, here are here are some you know additional ways to ensure that your quarterly expenditure plan is eligible. Uh, that's that question eight, and Arena is going to be talking about this in in more detail. Um, like I said, this has to include both your current balance and the new requested amount. And we understand that the current balance there that may not be a hard number, just given where some of your reimbursements may be. And we understand that, and your portfolio managers will work with you to get the closest number possible. Um, for amendment requests that are over $200,000, we want to make sure that at least 50% of the funds being requested fall within that uh, confirmed category, that they are ready to go and, you know, you're just waiting for this additional money from us to make those, um, make those tasks happen. And for amendment requests that are under 200000 at least 30% of the funds requested need to be confirmed. Um, I, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, no uh, new grantee project management allocations are um, allowable uh, for this request, but 
um, in your quarterly expenditure plan, if you have previously approved unspent allocation for project management, then you do have to, uh, you, you must go ahead and include that, but it can't uh, count towards meeting um, the uh, confirmed task requirement. Um, you do want to make sure that you have dialogues with your with your um, portfolio managers and your regulatory oversight agencies to make sure that they have asked for this, um, you know, for these tasks, and um, you know that the schedule is supported, and all the information that you provide meet your uh, guidelines of the grant um, year that you're in, which is round one. Next slide. Um, so, uh, you know, go ahead and start, um, you know, going through your your grant tasks and uh, confirming that you meet the general eligibility requirements. Um, you can uh, confirm your existing uh, uh, grant term date by taking a look at your agreement, set up a meeting with our Brownfields Technical Assistance Provider, the C-Clear uh, Redevelopment Specialist are, are ready to, to help um, out and help, you know, kind of talk you through what your plan is going to be. Consult with your D DTSE portfolio manager, um, you know, coordinate with your contractors, coordinate with your regulatory oversight agency, um, and start developing your plan. Um, we will have, um, uh, you know, uh, we'll talk about when the flex will be open, but of course, just get in there as quickly as possible and um, ask for a pre submittal review if the timing works out. Um, and I wanted to share with you, and I don't think I mentioned this before, that this is going to be a first come, first serve line for eligible applications. So your applications come in, um, we're going to, um, uh, you know, uh, confirm eligibility. And um, once we get the first few, you know, confirmed um, applications, those ones will be the uh, ones uh, funded. Next slide. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Raina, and Raina is going to walk uh, all of you through the quarterly expenditure uh, plan building. Thank you. Thanks, Miriam. Good morning, everyone. Um, so, as Miriam mentioned, the um, you know the amendment process will have a quarterly expenditure plan associated with it, and this basically captures all the information that we are going to be needing to be able to track progress of. Um, you know, proposed tasks and uh, funding requests um, and in addition to time extension. Um, so the basically the quarterly expenditure plan is as an Excel sheet uh, that can be created on Flux, similar to creating the scope schedule and budget table. The uh, number, so there's a, a drop down um, that will be, you know, associated with some of these columns for, um, for the time amendment. Um, granted uh, there will be different quarters um, for for the time extension um, that's been selected and so for example like for the six uh, for a six months extension you would need to select two quarters uh, for each quarter you'll need to select a scheduled um, ecrg task for that quarter and it can be multiple tasks um, as shown here on this table um, so for quarter one, there's an investigation work plan and field work. For quarter one as well, there is an investigation report. Uh, and for each task within that quarter, um, you'll need to include the associated funding amount um, that's, um, you know, that you've kind of confirmed um, that includes your, you know, regulatory oversight, your contractor fees, um, and uh, yeah, uh, and with, and included with that uh, last column is a task status. Um, so we, you know, we want to see whether this task has a confirmed um, status or in progress. Um, and um, yeah, it, basically for for that information, um, it will, you know, we'll we'll need to see. Um, something that's um, like Miriam mentioned with a high level of confidence, you know, uh, that these tasks will be uh, completed in time, uh, especially, you know, with the extended time. Next slide, please. Uh, so this information just, um, you know, it, it it's a little bit more detail uh, on, the, on the table that I just went over. Um, Please go ahead and refer to the ECRG guidelines for a list of eligible uh, ECRG tasks uh, for that for the specific grant type uh, that you have. Um, 
and you know confirmed status like Mary mentioned um, it's you know something that's a task that's ready for implementation with no barriers an in progress status task is a fully planned task that you know you're waiting for approvals or uh, contracts have been you know uh, are ready and reasonable schedule for completion um and you know, for ease of reference, um, the original grant amount and percent spend to date will be uh, shown on your amendment form. So when you, whenever you start the amendment process, we'll have that information ready so that you can uh, refer to it and um, is you know easily um, uh, accessible. Next slide, please. So. Um, Basically, the information and the and the request will be done through Flux. Um, and many of you are familiar with the Flux uh, um, application portal, DTSC application portal uh, for application submittals, quarterly reports, and reimbursement requests. Um, and so, if you're not, we have a, a Flux user guide available that provides users instructions. Uh, but basically, the next uh, couple of slides will go over basics um, on how to sign into Flux. And uh, next slide, please. So um, if you have more than one grant, um, you'll access the, the specific grant that you're requesting an amendment for. And so once you're you're signed in, you can select, um, you know, if there's multiple grants, like I said, you can select whichever um, the appropriate one is. Uh, next slide, please. And so this is just an overview of how to access the amendment request um, with once you click on the grant type uh, or the grant um, uh, the grant record uh, you'll be able to see an amendment. Um, um, uh, bar or option and you click you click on it. Um, and you'll you'll be able to start the process, um, so the presentation will be updated to include this step by step screenshots of how to submit a request. Um, but um, you know, this one is just on a high level. But um, for now, I'll hand it over to Miriam. Thank you, Raina. Thank you so much for that. Um, so, how are decisions going to be made? Uh, like I mentioned, all the applications that are submitted will be reviewed for eligibility as they are received. Um, uh, all of our decisions are going to be made on a first come. Um, for serve basis, uh, the, your time is going to be recorded based on the flux submission timestamp. Um, any agreements that are any requests that are approved will you know, be processed for signature and you'll have 10 days to go ahead and uh, use that uh, DocuSign um, uh, to, to get the agreement executed. Uh, for, for applications or uh, requests that are denied, um, we will give you the opportunity to uh, resubmit within 10 calendar days if the issue can be resolved. During those 10 calendar days, the original funding priority will be maintained. So um, if you send us a request and we determine that um, maybe uh, something was wrong, maybe the, maybe the reimbursement amount, uh, for example, was incorrect uh, and it, it, it threw off the, the calculations. Um, so we will ask you to cure that and if you get back to us within 10 days, then you still hold your place in line. All of our um, determinations are final. We don't have an appeal process. And if um, if you like, after 10 days, you may submit a new request if you weren't able to uh, cure that within the, the 10 days um, uh, for the curing period. Uh, if applications are submitted, if two eligible applications are submitted simultaneously the exact same time on Flux, then um, the priority will be uh, will be um, uh, done via the uh, ECRG application scores. That will be the tiebreaker, and um, you know I, I think I think that's generally our decision making process. It's going to be you know fast and and quite quick. Uh, next one. So currently we have just a, 
about $10 million for amendments. Um, uh, all of our funding availability is subject to change at any time. Um, I just wanted to point out where we were with round one on the caps for each grant type, 300,000 for CWAs, investigations were at 3 million and cleanups were at 7 million. So you can't cross these amounts when you are um, adding in your new request. Um, and you know we're going to have to see how this goes to maximize benefit to the greatest uh, maximize benefit to the most ECRG grantees depending on the number of requests that we receive we may adjust um the funding and reduce funding amounts um we'll just have to see how it goes it's just something that we wanted you to be aware of that it is something that we're considering um we'll see how things go and how many requests we receive next slide uh, I'm going to turn it over to Reina, who's going to talk a little bit about the updated uh, language in the amended agreements. Yeah, so um, if your amendment request is approved, the existing ECRG agreement will be amended and um, modified to include the changes. So, you know, your the time, uh, the grant term timeline um, will be updated to reflect the new term, the new grant term. Um, and then, uh, you know, the funded amount, um, if that's also um, changed, then the agreement will include that. Additionally, um, the non-compliance determination section um, and provisions will be updated um, in the new amended agreement to support the grant extension. Um, we did want to mention that the provisions are subject to change until the amendment is awarded. Next slide, please. Um, so basically, yeah, this is a continuation of that, um, the non-compliance and termination section. All right, I'll hand it over to Miriam. Thanks, Raina. And I, I think I'm not going to uh, belabor this point because Raina has already spoken to it in, in those slides. Let's just go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, you know, and I've talked a little bit more about, about this already, but just go ahead and get started and start getting your information um, together. Yeah. Um, one of the things I did want to point out Ow. is that um, I'm hearing an echo. Is anybody else hearing an echo? Okay. We'll just ask Nicole if you can make sure everyone is muted. Thank you. Um, one of the things I wanted to point out is it's really important that until the guidelines are final, there will be minor changes and adjustments made until we actually launch. But I think that the overall intention of the kind of information we need is going to be uh, the same. And so these slides are going to be released to you ahead of uh, the actual guidelines and the opening of the amendment process. And so I did want to make that clear. Um, I also wanted to point out that, you know, we have a really great group of staff uh, from, you know, CCLEAR and from DTSC's Office of Brownfields who are going to be involved in conversations and engage and, and do everything they can um, to get you to the point where you have a, a, an eligible application. It is really important to note that the decisions are not made in the context of those conversations. All of our decisions are made based on the application that's submitted. And sometimes those nuances may or may not translate from the meetings to the application. And so it's just something to keep in mind that no decisions on funding, um, even eligibility can be made um, or confirmed until the application is received and um, evaluated by our team who is looking at the data provided. Um, but you know, I think beyond that, we are, just really excited that we have this process and um, we, we're really happy to, to provide this opportunity. I've got a quick next slide and then I think we can uh, turn it back to Tony for questions. This is just more for you when you get the slide deck. I know we get asked a lot, there's some confusion about who the portfolio managers are and see clear. So this is uh, just a contact uh, slide for you to use uh, when you get the slide deck, especially for those of you um, who weren't original to the CRG agreements and came in later, I just thought this would be helpful. With that, um, I'm gonna turn it back to Tony. And Tony, I think we're ready to have questions. Yes, thank you. That was a very informative presentation. Uh, <clears throat> next slide, please. Okay, as we proceed into the question and answer period, um, we do have some questions in the chat. And then we'd also like to take some questions from you uh, verbally. So, if you're on Zoom, uh, please raise your hand and we will call upon you. 
uh, if you're on a phone line, uh, I don't think we have anybody on the phone line, but if we do, you need to press star nine to let us know that you'd like to ask a question. And then we'll call out the last four digits of your phone number. And when we do, you will need to press star six to unmute yourself to speak. Uh, we are going to take a couple of questions from the chat, probably two or three, and then we'll take some live questions from you. So uh, Vivian, who's been monitoring the chat, will start us off. Do we have any questions in the chat, Vivian? Yes, I mean, we do. So the first question is from Emily, and she's asking, are the responses um, just in a written format, or are they able to include visual schedules, Excel budgets um, for reference? Uh, thank you, Vivian, and thank you, Emily. Uh, the answer to the question is right now, this is our application process. There um, is space for the, responding to the narrative questions directly in flux, and the quarterly expenditure plan will have to be completed. We do not have uh, provisions for attachments at this time. Thank you, uh, so Miriam. Next, next question, do we have another, yeah. another, another chat question? Okay. The next question is from Warren, and she's asking, um, is the amount of expenditure based on the end of the contract date, or is it um, the expenditure submitted at an earlier date versus like end of the contract period? Um, the amount of expenditure, uh, the way you would measure which tier you're in based on percent spend is the amount that has been approved for reimbursement. And so that's the amount that we're looking at. As long as the reimbursement request, the total reimbursement request that you have submitted that have been approved by your portfolio manager, um, that's the that's how we're basing those percentages. I hope that answers your question. All right. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, um, oh, just, just I'm sorry, uh, I mean, one thing. And then if you have any questions about that, you can schedule a meeting with CClear through their Calendly link, and they can help you get to that amount and show you where you can find it in Flux. Before we get to the next question, Vivian, uh, I want to remind folks that we're also taking live questions, so please raise your hand. We'll take one more chat question, and then if there are hands raised, we will call upon you. So this is the time to raise your hand if you have a question for us. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. So next question from Sheila. Does one amend, amendment per grantee organization apply to requests for additional money or for time extensions as well? Um, at this time, the way we have um, our protocols written, it applies for um, any sort of amendment, but it is something that we will think about a little bit more. Thank you for that question. Okay, we're going to move over to the hands raised. Uh, we have uh, our first person. Can we please unmute Emily? Thank you for the presentation today. Um, my question is, um, can you explain a little bit more about the project management line item? Um, if uh, maybe with a an example, I'm still a little bit confused about whether or not there are any ways to get additional project management funds. Okay. Um, Emily, unfortunately, this time, there is no way to get additional project management allocation to your uh, current grant. Um, the only mention of project management is since um, the quarterly expenditure plan requires a, a new, um, you know, forward moving plan for your current balance and for your new request, there are going to be some grantees who haven't spent down their project management allocation, and they're going to be including that in their budgets. But there is no room for um, additional asks for project management at this time. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Okay, thank you, You're Emily, welcome. for your question. Uh, we're going to move on to our next uh, raised hand, and that is Kenneth Jones. Can we please unmute Kenneth? Yes, good morning. Good I morning. To, yes, I just want to follow up on uh, the one of the previous questions about the um, your status of drawdown at the time of application. And it sounds like you said it does not include if you have a pending reimbursement at the time of application, that that will not be included in your drawdown percentage. And I'm trying to kind of 
parse that out a little bit because it seems like if there is time to process that and have that approved, that it it should be included in the drawdown. Yes. So we can only include approved requests, a, a requested or approved reimbursement, because sometimes they're not right. Sometimes they're not approved. Sometimes we have questions and we have to go back and forth. So mm -hmm. we are um, uh, basing that that spend amount or that drawdown amount only on approved requests and not pending requests. And so we suggest to everybody submit. Um, you know, all your requests as quickly as possible so that our portfolio managers have time to review, um, confer with you if there's any questions and hopefully get the resubmissions um, if applicable and get those um, uh, approved for payment. Okay. Is it just a follow-up question? Is it possible to have the, I mean, if you're on the kind of on the cusp of, the expenditure level have your application maybe I don't know I'm not gonna say necessarily reapply but I think you discussed the situation where if you don't if you are denied that you're given some opportunity to I think you said you know 30 days or something I forget the specific time frame that you mentioned but um an opportunity to sort of update your information yeah sort of the, there, there yeah there is a there is a, a going to be a 10 day um okay. opportunity yeah. to cure we have not intended that to be for um additional reimbursement mm -hmm. um we are hoping that everybody applies you know in good faith depending on what box they're in and mm -hmm. that process to us more was about just some questions perhaps with some of the, the narrative uh, sections mm -hmm. and making sure that those are addressed. We were not intending this to be an opportunity to provide extra time for cure, uh, to cure something like that. Uh, for the reimbursement request, my very strong recommendation is to try and get that sorted now within the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll do everything uh, we can on our end to, to try and have the portfolio managers um, address those. But like I said in the beginning, we can't take any requests for expedited processing just because of our capacity and staffing uh, and other commitments, but we'll, we'll do the best that we can. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, thank Kenneth. You uh, we got Jake who has his hand raised. Uh, can we please unmute Jake? Yeah, thanks, Mary and Tony. Um, just a quick confirmation. So we have until September 30th of this year to apply for amendment, is that correct? Uh, that's so that's going to be a very specific question. Everyone's dates are different because it's 60 days before the um, completion of your current grant term. Uh, the 30th of September represents the grantee that has the, the, the latest, you know, uh, agreement signed or e execution date. Um, but each grantee has their own specific dates. So it's really, really important that you take a look at your agreement execution date and calculate like what your 60 day window is. Okay, got it. And I guess just as a follow up on that, it's 60 days from when the term was executed or 60 days prior to the end of the term. Doris, help me out. 60 days prior to the end of the term, right? Yes, it's 60 days prior to the end of the term. And Perfect. okay, I, I did want to note along the same lines of those questions, since you did ask about kind of like how long this process is going to be open, because we are first come first serve, um, I'm not sure if we'll have remaining balance that far out in September. So that is something to, to keep in mind and okay. uh, definitely have a conversation uh, with um, our redevelopment uh, specialist at C-Clear to double check your dates. Awesome. Thanks so much. You're Thank welcome. You, Jake. Okay. We're going to go back to the chat. Uh, Vivian, I'm sure we have Quite a bit of questions. Can yes, you... they're coming in here. Um, <laughs> we'll go to Stephanie. Um, so she and also Michelle kind of have similar questions of um, are these new allocations, are they able to move to um, a new grant type? So for Stephanie, is a, a CWA able to move to a, a site investigation? And for Michelle, is a investigation able to move 
um, to a cleanup. Thanks, Vivian, and thank you, Stephanie, and, and thanks, Michelle, for the question. No, uh, for this process, it is just an amendment to your existing grant, and you have to stay within your existing grant type, and all of your tasks have to stay within the defined ECRG tasks within that grant type. Thank you. Right, our next question from Lauren. Um, if we're asking for a uh, time extension and more, so time and money, um, and all the funds are depleted, are we still going to be granted a time extension? Yes. Um, if the funds are depleted, we will still be able to um, grant time extensions for our eligible uh, round one grantees. Right. And then I see, so our next question here from Kenneth. Does quarterly expenditure plan pending reimbursements? Does the quarterly expenditure plan pending reimbursement? Did we get that right, uh, Kenneth? Kenneth? Yeah, we, you've already addressed that. Okay, so, perfect. Okay. Thank okay. you. Let me jump in here and say that we're going to take one more chat question, and we want to be able to listen to folks that uh, might want to verbally ask questions. So this is the time to raise your hands again. We'll take one more chat question. And then please raise your hand if you want to address us um, while you're online. Okay, Vivian? Yeah. So um, Eric asks, will amendment potentially affect ECRG round three application submission? No. Okay, seeing no hands raised, let's continue with questions from the chat, Vivian. Of course, if you do have a question that you want to ask us and you're online, please raise your hand and we'll, we'll call upon you. Good. So our next one is from James. Um, he says that we applied for round two funding and are interested in the round one amendment for the same site. Uh, should we include the same, same scope from round two in our round one amendment application? And then they're able to decide which funding source to use at a later time, whether that's round one amendment or round two. And then he also asked, what's the current prospect of future round three given the state's budget? Okay, so I'm going to say, James, that we should have the um, decisions on round two released prior to the opening of our round one amendment process. So uh, I would say that if um, any one of our grantees are successful in round two, then they will not need to ask for additional money uh, through the amendment process. And for round three right now, we have uh, no new information on round three as to when that's going to happen. As we get information, we will share it. Vivian, let's continue. Sounds good. Thanks. Uh, Lauren's question is, in the, ex in the extension application, do applicants need to include the remaining project management budget as a part of the request, even though it was a part of the original application. For example, they're requesting $100 and there's $5 left of the project management budget, then they'd be requesting $105. Uh, yes, yeah, so I, I'm gonna answer the question a little bit differently. For, for the quarterly expenditure plan, you're going to be including your the balance of your um, you know, current grant allocation and you're also going to be including your new requests. So those are going to be combined uh, in the quarterly expenditure plan table that Raina shared with us. And then you are going to be included any um, unspent project management allocation, just that, just as you would with, with your remaining balance. Okay, just before we go to the next chat question, I'm going to, again, make the announcement that if you want to ask us a question while you are online, please raise your hand. Okay. All right, Vivian. That's the last question I have in the chat um, from Noah. Is this an opportunity to modify the grant commitments from the original application to reflect new circumstances? That is not something that we have discussed internally at all. We've really just been focusing on uh, budget um, and time and investigation and cleanup and assessment expenditures. Um, so it's something I'll think about, but at this time we had not provided for any additional modifications to the previous agreements. Okay. Questions I had in the chat. 
Is that all the questions we have? Okay. Uh, please add any more questions into the chat. We are here to listen, to answer questions. Please raise your hand if you have questions and like to address us in that uh, way. Um, otherwise, we'll turn the floor back over to Miriam. See if she's got any other additional information, but we, we will take your questions for a little bit longer if you have those. Oh, we have another one. David, can you expand on the limit of additional funding? Um, Nicole, can you go to the table where we had um, uh, the grant amounts for each grant type? Yes, right here. So these are these are basically this is what defines the um the limits right so uh for you cannot extend the limit your request cannot extend the limit on the grant type so if you're in community-wide assessment and you have two hundred fifty thousand dollars you cannot request more than fifty thousand dollars so on so forth for the investigation and the cleanup you can't um exceed those caps and um, we only have about $10 million for these amendments. So I, I hope that answers the, the question. Okay, David said yes, thank you. And then Eileen has a question of just if the recording will be sent out after the presentation. Okay. Um, and I wanted to go back to Noah's question and say, um, just go ahead and have a conversation with your portfolio manager about the specific circumstances and what you had in mind. Um, and we can we can just talk about that on a on a one on one basis. Great. Any other questions? Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, Kenneth. If we could please unmute Kenneth. Yeah. Yes, just just one more question for me. The man, maybe I missed this, but what's the anticipated timing of the release uh, of the amendment? Uh, we're Possibly thinking we're Possibly. thinking early March. Early March. Okay. We're thinking early March, but we will send out through ECR Good Morning the specific um, date and time that it will be available so everybody has time to prepare because you know with it being first come first serve we want to make sure that everybody knows exactly what it's going to be so i think um sometime early next week um you know we're in the process of jess is building the system there's a lot going on so we'll probably make an announcement early next week or sometime next week about exactly the the day date and time that the amendment um will open up on flats Okay, great. Thank you. Great. I, I saw Serena with her hand up. Did she lower her hand? No longer her question? Uh, yes. I'm sorry. I had a similar question to Kenneth. Okay. So we've answered that for you? Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great. Do you have any questions in the chat, baby? No more questions in the chat. Okay. It's about 10.54. So we're right on time. We will take more questions if we have them. If not, um, we'll give the floor to Miriam for some closing remarks. Um, uh, Tony, I was also going to say if anybody has uh, any slide that they want uh, either myself or Reina to revisit, um, we can use this space for that as well. Um, I agree. Let's give everyone a, a beat to see if they have any more questions, and then we can do our closing. Great. Would anyone like us to go back to the slide and to spend a little time explaining that slide? If so, okay. raise your hand and put it in the chat. Yeah. Sorry, um, I lost my raise hand function. I, I did have one more question. Sure. Okay, um, so um, I know that we have to have, um, if we're applying for extension, uh, time extension, um, we want to show that the tasks are already in progress or um, planned. Um, are we taking, 
or is DTSC taking into consideration when are moratoriums and what's the um, time frame once, say, an amendment has um, been executed? I know you said that there's 10 days between when you have to sign the DocuSign document, but mm -hmm. is the amendment starting after the current grant period is over? Like, what does that time frame look like? And is when are more in terms taken into consideration? So say, just for example, if your um, current grant period is up in like middle of June, mm -hmm. when moratorium is in October, like that's a very short window in which you can potentially do work. So I'm just wondering like, when's this, like if you're continuing to do work right now, obviously your schedule will reflect that, but um, is DTSC taking into consideration winter moratoriums as part of the plan schedule um, and task? Uh, I So we hadn't considered those specific things. Um, I think it's all about how you designed, how you write and explain that in your narrative, because that could be something that is, confirmed because you've planned around the winter moratorium and know exactly how you're dealing with it. And when it's over, you're going to be doing certain things because if you're going to be asking for a 12-month uh, extension, then you know you can talk about how certain quarters no work will be done. But when the moratorium is done, then the other work will take place and that work is already confirmed. Um, so it's 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 about how you explain to us and how you show credibility of your quarterly expenditure plan, both within um, the way you complete the plan itself and the way you put the information in your narrative. Um, does that does that answer your question, Serena? I want to make sure I'm answering your question. No, that that makes perfect sense. Thank you so much. Okay, so it's it's building it's building in. Um, or building around the barriers that you know, right? That you, can, you are aware of certain barriers. It's either saying that uh, we're going to get all of this done ahead of the moratorium. And that's how we've dealt with that barrier. Or you're saying that we're designing around it and we have a high level of confidence that when the uh, moratorium is over, we're going to be, we're going to be good to go. Um, and, you know, the, the time extension just basically is expanding your, your grant term. So if you're ending in June, of this year, you're now ending in June of next year. That's your 12 month extension. And so you're just building almost like a new schedule. It's kind of like what a lot of our grantees went through in the beginning where we had the budget realignment, where we, you, we had taken what you had given us and we had redone everything. And this is kind of like another opportunity for your, um, for your budget um, and for your task to like to realign them to where you are now. Um, as long as we have, I mean, that's really what it comes down to because our money right now is so limited and because our funds themselves have expiration dates associated with them, uh, we really need the asks that come from you to be only for the tasks that you are going to complete um, because we just don't wanna be in a situation where uh, we get towards the end of these extended uh, grant terms and we're getting unspent dollars now that have to be returned to the legislators because we didn't spend it. And that's why we have that very strong emphasis on um, needing the task to be confirmed or uh, you know, very much planned and barriers addressed. Great. So we get a thumbs up on that answer from Serena. Thank you. We have Shayla, uh, who has her hands raised. I hope I pronounced that right, Shayla. Thanks. Um, yeah, Miran, with the two types of uh, tasks that you're talking about, and I'm a bit confused about the specific terminology, it sounds like there's the confirmed tasks and the like already in, in progress and approved tasks. You said earlier on that if DTFC isn't able to verify or have a lot of confidence in the, the confirmed tasks that haven't been approved by the regulatory agency, then the application can be rejected. I'm wondering if you apply for an amendment with both types of tasks, if DTSC will consider approving it with just the, you know, confirm or just the approved in progress tasks, even if they decide not to accept the um, the ones that are need verification. I'm I'm processing what you're saying. Are you saying that you're going to present a budget? 
with some confirmed tasks and some in progress tasks? And will we make a decision to partially fund based on what we're able to verify? Is, is that your question? Yeah, exactly. Um, no, no, I think at this point, uh, where we're going to land is either everything you presented is eligible or it's not. And that's why I think it's on the grant writers uh, to make sure that everything that is presented in the quarterly expenditure plan is verifiable, because if it's not verifiable, then it's going to be considered to be ineligible. Got it. Thanks. Okay. Did we answer your questions, Sheila, or do you have another question? No, that, that was really helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're going to move on to Michelle King, who has her hand raised. If we can unmute Michelle. Can we please unmute Michelle, please? Or Michelle, if you can unmute yourself. Yeah, so they have to unmute themselves. We can only can ask her to unmute, but she has to do it herself. Yeah, hi, Michelle, are you there? And can you unmute yourself? The floor is yours. Or star six, if you're on the phone, Michelle, are, are you on the phone? If you're on the phone, then you'll need to uh, press star six to unmute yourself. Michelle says it won't let her unmute. That's weird. Everybody else has been able to. Uh, maybe we'll just have her put her question in the chat then. Yeah, we're having a technical difficulty there, Michelle. Maybe you can write your question in the chat and we'll read it into the record and have Miriam uh, answer it. Our apologies for that. While we wait for um, the question, Michelle's question in the chat, we do have a question from Colette in the chat. Uh, she's asking if we have a community-wide assessment grant in the amount of $299,375. Uh, then would we be able to ask, would we only be able to ask for $625 to stay under the $300,000 limit? Yeah. Yes, but unfortunately, there is a, there's a minimum ask. Uh, for CWAs of 5,000. So uh, for a grant that is that close to the ceiling, uh, there's no room for uh, requesting an amendment. Okay, I think Michelle did put her question in the chat. Didn't and you? I was finally able to unmute. Oh, oh, okay, hey. there, all right. Hey. Yeah, and there was like a pending thing I wasn't answering. Um, but anyway, so we have an investigation grant for $3 million. And um, but if I go on the website now, maybe this was for round two, it says investigation grants are for up to seven million. And so are the spend limits the three million for investigation or is it seven? It's the three million. So uh, round one grantees are staying within round one guidelines. Okay. And, and therefore the limits for round one will apply to the round one amendments. Okay. All right, thank you for clarifying. Thanks, thank Michelle, you. for asking. Okay, do we have any more questions in the chat? No further questions. Do we have anyone uh, that likes to ask a question by raising their hands? If so, this is the time. Is there anyone that would like us to further review a slide or a couple of slides? If so, please let us know either by raising your hand or putting that in the chat. Okay, we are at time. It's 11.04. Want to not seen any further questions or any further raised hands or anything in the chat. So I'd like to thank everybody for participating today. I hope that you found this presentation informative. Uh, I'd like to turn it over to Miriam for some closing remarks, but do want to appreciate everybody for joining us and participating. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Tony. Uh, Nicole, can you go to our like what what's next, the next steps slide and just kind of land there? Um, I, I like Tony want to thank all of you for taking the time to come and listen to us talk about this process.
Um, I know we presented a lot of information. It is very dense. We'll uh, release the slides and the recording as quickly as we can so that you can start digesting it and um, start working on your amendment request. Um, go ahead and please contact CCLEAR for uh, assistance through their Calendly link and start setting up your times. Please get your reimbursement requests in as quickly as possible so that our um, portfolio managers have time to review and, and um, approve them for, uh, uh, for payment. And, um, you know, we have learned so much from our round one grantees throughout this process. You know, you're the first batch of grantees on this you know, incredible program that we're so lucky to have in our state. Um, every time you ask a question, whether our answers are yes or no, uh, we particularly take those like no answers and record them and think about them um, and see, you know, why is that question asked and what is there something that we can be uh, doing different? And so every single question that you ask and every single uh, piece of feedback that you give us is very important for us in our constant um uh, desire to like improve our service to all of the communities that we serve. So I, I do want to thank you for your time. I wish you all the best of luck and um, thank you so much for taking time to join us today.